Hey everybody, this is Jeff from the library, and I want to talk to you today about uh, how to search without the peer-reviewed control in our databases. So I'm going to go into the discovery system which searches all of our databases right here. I'm going to click Advanced Search, so I can just jump in here, start running some searches. Now, <clears throat> because at our university, most of the assignments require peer-reviewed literature for the students to use. This is turned on by default. Uh, when we first got this discovery system, students kept having a hard time weeding out anything that wasn't peer reviewed. So I just had this turned on by default, which in most cases is, is fine. But the peer reviewed limiter eliminates a lot of things you might find useful. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to do a general search here. I'm going to put the term social movements into quotation marks there, and I'm going to run a search. Now this is with the peer review journal limiter on, which generally is what most assignments seem to be looking for. And you have 45,802 all full text articles with social movements in there somewhere. We could make it more specific. And this is great, but this is just going to be articles from peer review journals. And there is a lot more that this database could search. So it's very useful to know how to turn this off. So if you want to expand your search beyond peer-reviewed journals, you could just turn this off right here. And once you turn it off, it automatically runs a new search for everything. So about twice as many. Now the thing that's interesting now, now it's searching all kinds of different sources. So one thing that's kind of cool that it does it brings up what it thinks is probably the most basic uh, summary type source first. So this is from the Salem Press Encyclopedia, Four Stages of Social Movements. This would be great for your students or even yourself if you want to get some basics on this topic before you get into the peer-reviewed journals. Because as you know, the peer-reviewed journals are only going to cover very, very specific small aspects of this, usually that some original research was done on, some kind of a study, some kind of a survey, some kind of observable data, which is not going to summarize what social movements are. So if you're looking for some background information, when I turned that off, the first thing it brought up was this nice summary article. This is called a research starter. And it generally won't find these if the peer reviewed button is turned on. So look at this, four stages of social mu movements. This is what I like to see, overview. What is a social movement? This would be great for your students or even for yourself if you're designing a course and you want to uh, give someone just some background on this before you throw them into the heavy duty world of peer reviewed journal research. What is a social movement? Four stages of social movements. And that's great. That's just the first thing that came up. So that's one really nice thing. If you turn off the peer reviewed limiter, it will bring up a lot of summary type things to give more basic types of information. Now again, for the uh, with the peer review journal limiter on, which I turned it off here, it's not going to bring up any books, it's not going to bring back any videos, it's only going to bring back journal articles. So now that we have that turned off, there's all kinds of neat things we can find. Over here, limit by source type. I could go in here. Let's say I'm looking for books. Again, some, some a summary type source. It's going to give me some background that's not necessarily just going to be the latest studies. If I click here on ebooks and then update, it's now going to search for books on this that we have access to. And these are full books. You have full access to every page of these books. And look at all these great sources. Again, none of these will come back if that peer reviewed limiter is on. Look at all these really cool things here. A lot of really cool books. And any one of these that you open up, you will get the full text on. Let's look at some other things here. Let me go back to limit by source type. And I'm going to click show more again. I'm going to turn off the ebooks. A lot of you are also looking for videos. Let me put videos in here. Now I'm just going to look for videos on this topic. And again, Videos are not published by peer-reviewed journals, no matter how serious the video is, it's not going to be published by a peer-reviewed journal. So look at this, 1,691 videos on this. And the nice thing about this, 
you instead of going and searching films on demand and then searching Sage video and then searching Alexander Street video and then searching Sage Research Methods video, this is going to search all of our databases at once so that you can you can search all of them at once. The only one that it won't search of our video databases, it will not search LinkedIn Learning or some people call that lynda.com, what it used to be known as. But um, it'll search all of the other databases when you do this. The one catch I've noticed with this, and this is this is a strange issue with it, but I want you to be aware of this. So, okay, great. I have 1,691 videos on social movements. Let me change that to title. Now I just want videos with social movements in the title. We have 1,691 sources. When you change anything up here, usually what ends up happening Okay, now we have 6,650. That doesn't make sense. There's a book. How did a book show up in there from my video search? What I have noticed is that when you change anything in the search up here, it resets this source type. So if I'm still looking for videos, but I want videos with social movements in the title, I will. you will have to, anytime you change anything in your search terms, you will have to go over here to the limit by source type and put again what you would like it to find. So videos, and then I update it, and then it'll search again for videos just with social movements in the title. So it's a great thing to know how to use this limit by source type, but just know that anytime you change any of your search terms, it's going to reset it to search for everything again. So it's a kind of a glitch in the system. It's been reported. They're working on getting that fixed, but that's the way that it searches right now. So there's a quick preview of some really neat things you can do uh, in the database searching once you turn off peer review journals. And I know that most of the assignments, and this is for students and instructors as well, most of the assignments at our university require peer review journals as sources. But there are a lot of other great sources out there you could use that are going to be eliminated by that. If you turn off that scholarly peer review journals uh, limiter, it will really open up the sources that you can look for. Okay, that was just a quick, quick introduction to this different way that you could search. So hopefully that will open up your, uh, your search possibilities. As always, if you have any questions for me, please get in touch with me and I will help you in any way that I can.